Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Mystic Eye Games playthrough of Sleeping Gods. And welcome back to the Wandering Sea where we are going to continue our adventures with the crew of the Manticore, Captain Sophie Odessa and her uh, remaining eight crewmates, her other eight crewmates, plus some other tags, tag alongs such as Gloria Walker, who's there basically uh, there someone who, uh, a passenger or something, I don't know what she is, but it's cool, and she helps us out by doing some stuff, and there's all kinds of things going on. I'm going to do a little bit of a recap right now, where in the uh, first episode, we arrived in the Wandering Sea, we were captured by some beast-headed men that look a lot like that, well, they look exactly like that. We defeated them, freed a, uh, a woman named Mac, or Mara Johnson, who's from Atlanta, Georgia, and has been trapped in the Wandering Sea, the world of the Wandering Sea, for some time. Um, we freed her, and she joined our crew. After we got aboard the ship, again, we took our ship, and we sailed back out away from the, the bad guys that, were, uh, that had uh, uh, abducted us. We uh, decided to set sail. We had a couple things we knew we could do. Uh, Mac wanted to go visit the cottage of a woman named Anne, who, in theory, had a map to help guide us to one of the totems. So we followed Max lead and we sailed over there fairly uneventfully, but when we got there, it took quite a bit of negotiating to get her on board. She chose not to come with us, but she did actually give us the, the map. And now we have a location uh, that we can travel to from that. In addition to that, we, we also explored some more of the island. We found a, a beach with a big bonfire being built. Uh, it was the uh, Seekers of Shorm, and they were uh, worshippers and religious uh, folks on a pilgrimage. Uh, there, we decided to help um, build a bonfire. Actually, Gregory Little, our doctor, really got involved with that. But it didn't go well. I mean, he got very stressed out. He took some, he'd been carrying the wood, really beat him up. He took some, some injuries and, and, and a morale hit on top of that. Later in the day, oh, by the way, when, when meeting with Annie, uh, Marco Reyes, our priest, had a, because we, we were threatening to burn down our place and kidnap her and everything, but we, he would have none of it, so we had to keep negotiating with her. We finally did solve that. But later on the boat, there was a big argument about all of this between Kanan uh, Sharma and Kasumi uh, Shima, uh, where they uh, got into a, a, a debate, basically an argument, that resulted... Actually, it wasn't Kanan. Kanan helped us on the island. It was Laurent Lapointe, our Canadian, who got in a fight with Kasumi about what happened on the island, and they ended up getting into a scuffle with each other. Now they're both a little wounded. We decided to sail back because we have some, some resources now, money and other things. We decided to sail back toward Zakura Trading Post, which uh, is kind of not on our way. But there's things, there's non anomalies out in the, the uh, waters that we're afraid of that could possibly damage us, so we're being careful. With that said, we're going to get into our next episode where we are going to sail to Zakara Port and see what we can get into there, maybe spend some money, do a, a market action. It's a trading post, not a port. I think there is a distinction. So uh, we're going to get right to it right now. So join me as the crew of the Manticore continues its adventures trying to find the totems of the sleeping gods in the Wandering Sea. Hey everybody, it's Doug here, Future Doug, coming to talk to you in the past, at least in the past in this video. Now today happens to be one of the coldest days we've ever experienced in Austin, Texas. So if you hear a, a sound in the background like a white noise sound that's actually the couple of heaters i have running in my studio because it is freezing I'm wearing a big leather coat it is about 28 degrees i'm trying to warm the place up that said i wanted to talk through a couple of things with you 
Um, I got a lot of feedback on this game, which is fantastic because that means people really enjoy it. And that's great. And it is a great game. But I want to talk about the point of strategy. And maybe I didn't make it clear enough when I, I explained what I was trying to do. But I think fatigue, and I did say this, I think fatigue is a problem in the game, at least in the early stages. So I was doing what I could to make an attempt to only use one person in a skill check. Okay? And the reason, I, even though I do know I can use more, I can have people assist, I was doing that on purpose. And the reason behind it is because it seems to me in the early part of the game that it's easier to get a, a command tokens removed from characters and more command tokens than it is to remove fatigue from characters. So, now I have the luxury of knowing that I filmed several episodes ahead and how that turned out for me, that strategy. But I wanted to let you all know that I am aware that, that, that it is the case that I can use other characters in a skill check. And later in late, much later episodes, you will see that as I, I don't want to spoil it, but as I gain things that allow me to, to reduce fatigue faster, I may be using more characters in a skill check. But that was my mission. So hopefully you understand that. I just wanted to come in and chime in on that because I've gotten so many, so much feedback on the, on the, the actual videos and, and in forums and posts and things like that. So I just wanted to address it. That is the reason I'm doing that. So I'm going to return you back to the gameplay in the past. And which was not the coldest day, one of the coldest day, days in Austin, Texas. And we're going to continue on with the gameplay. So thanks so much, and enjoy the rest of the, the video. Of course, we're going to take our three actions off our ship board right here, but we have to get rid of a lot of stress, and so I'm really debating on what we do next in that regard. Um, there, we got a lot of people who are fatigued, rather not stressed, but fatigued. And um, we need to remove some of that. So I'm looking at maybe going to the galley where people can, can eat. Uh, maybe trying to figure out how we get these, this soup made, which will uh, help quite a bit. But the galley itself... So the first action we're going to take is our ship action. That's why I'm talking about this. Uh, so the galley itself will help us get, a ri get rid of a little bit of that. Um, let's go over what the the uh, ship action does in the galley. We get to draw two ability cards, one ability card if we're one player, which we are, so we draw one card, and gain the spe uh, specified number of command tokens. Well, in that location, in the galley, um, it is going to be two, because we are a single player, so we're gonna get, we would get two additional command tokens. We also get to, may discard uh, exactly one ability card from our hand or remove a fatigue from somebody. Uh, which I think is going to be important for us to get some of this fatigue off. Now, there's other ways to get the fatigue out of, off of us um, uh, through some other methods, but that's the one that we have available to us right now. The main one is uh, we could use three grain to make flapjacks or use a uh, number of resources to make soup. We don't have enough quite yet of either. But, again, the first thing we have to do is take our ship action. So I think we might as well do that. So we're going to go from the sick bay. Remember, you can never go to the location you were just on. So we have to leave the sick bay. We also have, we don't have that many uh, command tokens out. There's just ones on Mac, right, and one on one of the abilities on Kasumi. So we're okay there. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to the galley. The first thing we're going to do is draw one ability token based on that. It says two or three, and then it, it corresponds with the player count one or two. So we get a sharp eye. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's one. Oh, that's a six. I don't think I want this in our hand. Because I could throw it along the sixes on the board. Um, now, it, the next part of this ability is we can, we're going to get two command tokens. So we have four to spend right now. That's good. And then we can give up a special ability, which I think, man, I kind of like both these. I think we're going to give up this one to heal a fatigue. It says we can give up exactly one. So uh, we did that, and we're going to heal the fatigue on... Um, on, I think, uh, is, here's where the decision making comes into play. I think we're going to relieve it on, relieve the fatigue on Mac. So Mac had a fatigue on her, and we're going to take that off and give that, put that back. So now she's fully rested. She did use one of her abilities, but she's got another one she can use. That was our ship action. Now we're going to go to our next event card. Let's see what happens when we draw our event. Otherworldly path. The air fluctuates ahead. Your view distorted as through hot air. An unfamiliar horizon appears in the appears beyond. Sail through. Turn one page on the atlas, left or right. Move the ship to one of the regions, gain one frightened. Or steer the ship away, pay one command, and gain one fatigue. Uh, you know, um, 
we're going to steer the ship away. I'm not ready to do that yet. I don't even know what that's, that would do to us. So we're going to steer the ship away. So that means we are going to, what did it say? Uh, we're going to have to spend one of our command tokens, which sucks. And we're going to gain a fatigue on somebody, which means I just got rid of one. I think we'll put this fatigue on, uh, oh man, um, I think we're going to put it on, back on Mac, I guess. Mac's going to take the fatigue. She can handle it, right? I guess. We'll see. All right, and then uh, that is going to end our, our um, event phase. Now we're going to go to our two actions. We can choose two actions from these numbers. The first one we're going to do is a travel action. Now, there are locations we can visit here, but really I just want to travel to here. So we're not going to uh, expend any crew. We're just going to sail based in, and hope we get lucky. We do because we're not going to get unlucky with this. We get to, uh, to move one. A two will move us one on the card. So we move to here, which is what we want. And then for our second action, we're going to take a port action here. We can take one or two, market or port action. Hmm. Let me look at the differences there, because I think we want a market action, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and how do I know about the actions? Because they're here and here. They are also on our ship board uh, showing us what they are. So let's take a look at the market action, because I think we're going to draw a bunch of cards to be able to buy some stuff. That might be useful because I, I'm a little concerned we're not we're not getting skills out and things like that. I, I mean we got to get that done as we go, uh, which will cost us some command. So if we take a port action, the things we get to do with a port action, I'll just show you, are these right here. We can go to the inn, uh, pay four coins for each crew member. Uh, each crew member restores two health and removes one fatigue. Oh, for four coins, maybe we want to do a port action here. And then next turn, we can start our turn by taking a market action, even though it's going to cost us a lot of our money. We can go to the shipyard. We can pay any number of material resource tokens or coins to the supply to repair one ship damage. We can go to the healer, pay one coin to restore all health to a crew member. You do this for any number, then it's not worth it. Uh, spend experience. Well, it, it requires, I think, four experience to do anything, so I don't think we're going to spend experience. I'll take a look at that right now, but I don't think we're going to do that. But I think... So I believe, so Zakura Trading Post is also a report, a port, it says so right here, and it also says it's a market. So for four coins, just read that again, pay four coins, each crew member restores two health and removes one fatigue. That is really powerful, I think we're going to do that. So we're going to take a port action, and as my understanding is the ship must be in the same region as a port, you may then perform any or all of those actions. So I want to look up the, up the experience as well. So we docked into Zakura Port. We are going to spend four, so we're going to take that one, get one back. That only leaves us with two, so I don't think a market action next turn is going to do well. But we get to take off all the fatigue, which was a lot of people, and all the damage off the folks that we had damaged. So that was a very good uh, moment for us. Um, what we could do next turn, I think we'll start with an encounter and secure a trading post. That might be good. Let's figure out, well, maybe we'll meet some valuable people over there, but I want to look at spending experience points real quick just to see what uh, what that will do for us. I'm trying to remember. Um, also, there's items in that too, but I, I wanted to clear the uh, clear the, the all that fatigue and everything off our crew after these last bit of adventures. Yeah, we're not going to be able to spend any of that experience. We simply don't have enough. Uh, but um, what we can do is uh, end our turn. So we basically we traveled, then we had a port action where we all went to the inn and rested up, which was, I think, a very important thing for us to do, which will then take us back to our next action. Now, if this was a multiplayer game, I would take the captain token and I'd pass it to somebody else, but it is not. Before we do that, do I, I can spend some of our points before we get some more. This one's pretty good. World Wisdom, discard an, this equipped card to skip an event card. That could be really useful, and I could equip this on somebody who already has some mechanic ability like Audrey Williams, our, one of our mechanics who's good at repairing. Let's do that. We're going to take this card and I'm going to spend the associated two uh, command tokens and we're going to we're going to tuck this under here under her abilities. Now she has that symbol available to her. So now she has two craft ability symbols and she can use the power of that card. I think that's worthwhile. Okay, now we'll start our new turn. Now again, we can't stay in the galley. We have to go somewhere else. We have no fatigue. Um, I think the best thing for us to do, we do definitely want some more command tokens. I could get three command tokens. We're going to go to the quarters this turn. We're going to go here. This will give us three command tokens for being uh, a single player. So one, two, and three. 
and then we can take a two off of a, another player. So we're going to take the two off of Mac and free up her ability to add one to a challenge because I think that will be valuable to us later on. So that was our ship action. Now we're going to yet another event card. That last one was really scary to me. I didn't like it at all. A seaweed garden. A lush patch of seaweed sways beneath the waves. Harvest the seaweed. Savvy six. Fire minus two health. Uh, gain two vegetables. So or minus three health, gain two vegetables. It doesn't say we don't gain them if we fail. So um, I think we'll definitely do that because we don't have any vegetables, and that would allow us to take the action to get those, uh, maybe perhaps the flapjacks of the soup when we need them. Okay, I think we're going to use La Ronde Le Point to go to the seaweed garden. This is him right here. You can see that he, does, he has savvy. That's this symbol right here. So we have a one. We need to make a six, though, pretty steep. However, we do have the ability to assist him with um, um, Mac, with her ability to add one, or, no, we used Kasumi's ability to draw another card. We also have one up there, that, oh man, yeah, so it's gonna be a little tough. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I don't think there's anything else we can do to beef that up, but let's give it a go. Okay, here we go, so we need a savvy six, so we, need, we have a savvy right now, we need five, so we need a five or six, and we got a one. Okay, so we failed miserably at that. I don't think, uh, you know, getting a bonus is not going to help. So we failed at three health. Now again, I think unless it tells you otherwise, you go to the next thing. You take the fail action and you go to the next thing. So we failed, so he took three damage. That is really bad for him. He's not in good shape, so we don't want him to do anything too strenuous. He also is going to take a fatigue for trying this event, but we do get two vegetables. Um, and let me get those vegetable tokens out. Now, I have the Kickstarter components. So they are nicer, than they're, they're better than the cardboard ones, there's the plastic ones. And so here are two vegetables that go on the ship. Now we have the ability to make some change there, but Laurent was hurt in doing so, getting down the seaweed garden. So this is gone. And we're going to move on. Now please tell me if I'm wrong about that, but the way I read the rules was, unless it tells you you, you don't get the result of failing, you do get it. You just took whatever the consequences are of succeeding. Now we get to take our two actions, and I think for the first of our two actions we're going to explore, uh, and we're going to explore Zakura Trading Post. Okay, so I did figure that symbol means it's, it is related to a quest, which we don't have. We don't have this one. So Zakura Trading Post. If keyword unleashed, turn to 222. We do not have that. So we're going to go here. The Trading Post at Zakura is a collection of weathered wood and tidy shops, a dull sister to the majestic obsidian hills which lie at its northern edge. We have a choice. We can explore the docks, visit the tavern, talk to the dock master, sell pollen at the potion shop, requires the keyword pollen, which we don't have, or leave. I think we'll explore the docks. Let's do that. So we're going to explore the docks. That's going to take us to 130.1. A sailor approaches with skin like cured meat and a lion's mane of sea salted hair. Aye. We've no need for cuss folk here. He punches a finger at, at your, into your arm. Hmm. Appears you aren't a ghost, but I would have sworn you were, were when you docked out in on that iron ship. There's one exactly like it wrecked on the rocks just north of here. So, we found another quest. We're going to gain quest 5, and then we're going to turn to page 130. So let me get quest 5 out of the quest box and tell you what that is. This system is really great. Think all the storytelling we're doing. We're getting these quest cards, telling the story. We're also getting stories off the... the uh, Event cards, man, it's crazy. Okay, um, investigate crashed freighter. A sailor at Zakura Trading Post told us about a crashed ship that looks just like ours. He said it's stuck in some rocks to the north. Okay, we'll have to go searching for that. But now we got uh, the freighter. We got s s uh, four different quests we're trying to get. Then we go back to 130. Well, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't visit the tavern next. We have to pay a coin. We have two coins left. Maybe we'll get something good out of it. So we're going to visit the tavern and pay a coin. There's one of our two coins. We just paid it, and we're going to turn to 130.2. The thump of a hand drum and the aroma of stewed meat put your crew at ease for the first time in days. They enjoy a meal while you talk with the tavern owner. When you mention your ship, she brightens. Someone was looking for the manticore. Nice woman. Ate like a mythin. She said, uh, she said she was leaving. Heading west to look for you, if I remember right. That's got to be Jin, says Marco. 
I knew she was gone. For, oh, I knew she wasn't gone for good. She's a fine sa a sailor as I am captain. He puffs. Wait, Marco, you're not captain. Get out of here, buddy. Um, you hear rumors about Jin, a lost crew member. Okay. Gain quest nine and turn to 130. We are gaining a ton of quests that we're going to have to solve here. Let's pull quest nine. What does quest nine say? Jin fell overboard during the storm that brought us here. I didn't know that. But we heard a rumor in Zakura that she li she's alive and looking for us. She boarded a ship heading west. So now we have Cook. Oh, man, we want her. We've got to find the Cook. She's going to be somebody that we can that can help us out. So we're going to go back to 130 again. So now we can talk to the Dock Master. I mean, we're, we're learning a lot here, but we're paying some serious resources. Do I want to get rid of a food? Hmm. Um, we can... Just, you know, I was hoping to keep some of that around to uh, give us some, some uh, resources. So oh, actually, food is any of those. So I could give him the meat. The meat's not as useful to us, even though it, well, I give him a carrot. I can give him a vegetable. Then we can still make the soup if we need to, as well as, or the, and, or the flapjacks. So we're going to do that. We're going to go visit the dock master. Going to give us to 130.3, and we're going to give him a vegetable to do that. So let's go to 130.3. The dock master a Lucran, I don't know what that is, with maroon skin and a twitching eye warms up to you after Marco shares a bit of soup with him. You ought to stop at the little rocky island to the east, the one with the dead trees, he snorts. I'll give you a chance, it'll give you a chance to study some of the more vicious species. He walks away laughing, still holding the soup bowl. The dock master warns you about dangerous creatures on the little rocky island to the east. Uh, Remove one low morale. That is fantastic because only Gregory Little, the doctor, had a low morale. So that is gone. Um, return to 130. That was it. So he just told us that there are... So we know just from a, from what he told us, it's a story element. It doesn't actually impact anything, that there is monsters to the east. And that is going to end our our exploration of Zakara trading post, post because we can't sell any po pollen. We don't have any, so we can't do that and we didn't have the keyword we needed to do the other thing. So we are now going to leave and return to our ship. So let's talk about what he, what we've learned so far, right? We know that our other shipmate started said heading west, I think they said, in search of Jin head west. Hmm. So we can go west or east. West will take us to where? 13, not, or 8. So we want to go up to here and head that way if we're going to go look for her. That, man, I, I feel like we got so much to do, so much to do. We also know that I think that the the harbor master was talking about this island here. That looks like, or this or one of these two locations here. So we got a heck of a lot to do. Um, so we did our first action there, which was uh, we explored the trading post. I think we will move, and I think we're going to move. If we move here, we have to do this test. But if we're going to find Jin, I think that's going to be a priority. We're going to go find Jin, then we can come back this way. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to draw a card. So our, our next action is going to be a travel action. We're going to take this. We're not going to have any crew help because we don't need to move any farther than that. But we got a six, so we could have moved way across the whole world. Um, we would have been able to move at least two spaces from that. If we had put a, applied a crew member, we would have been able to move three. But right now, we just want to move to here. Now, when we're here, we're going to have to make a uh, cunning uh, five test or suffer a low morale. Um, so I think uh, Cannon is going to help with that. He's got Cunning right here, and he's going to help us with this uh, mission. And we just drew a six, so we're probably going to fail this. We need a five. We need a four because we have one. And we got a four. Perfect. All right. All right. So we passed that, and we went through this cloud embankment here and did not suffer any issues from going through there. And that, again, ends our next turn. So we're, we're actually blazing through some turns. And again, I'm not spending as much time talking about specific rules. We're just moving along and seeing what happens. We haven't had to fight anything yet. That's good. We're just traveling around causing problems, right? Okay, well, that is... Now, we didn't spend any command points at all that turn, which is very interesting. Um, didn't need to. But I think we're going to be traveling into onto a new map already. And we'll come back this way. But we got to go find Jen, and she's west, right? We don't want to go east. We want to go west right now and find her. Um, however, she could just be right here. There's a shipwreck. Oh, wait. There's the shipwreck up there. I think we're going to check out that shipwreck first, the freighter. 
It says, uh, let's look at that again just to make sure I'm talking about the right thing because that does look like a shipwreck up there. It says, a sailor at Zakura Trading Post told us about a crashed ship that looks like ours. He said it's in some rocks just to the north. Yeah, so that's it. So I think as we go through our next round, our first action is going to be to explore the shipwreck. Get some stuff, right? Stuff's always good. Let's go back to our action board and take our next rounds of actions. And I did remember to... Uh, Put a fatigue token on Cannon for helping out with the uh, task in that cl in cloud embankment as we went through it. Okay, so where do we want to go now? We I think we might go back to the deck. Nobody's, well, Laurent's actually hurt. Maybe that's the thing to do. We're, we've drawn a lot of, or we don't have any cards to use right now. Let's do that. Now, there's again, there's a finite supply of things, so we're going to end up with a lot of command tokens. That's a good thing. So we're going to head on back to the sick bay. First thing we're going to do is draw a new ability card. It is Inspire. I like that one too. Very easy to get put out to somebody. So we're going to place this out on someone for sure. Maybe the captain. That seems like a good captain's skill. Inspire, right? Uh, then we're going to gain three command tokens. That is fantastic. So we've got quite a few command tokens built up. That's very good. And we're going to heal um, one um, health from somebody, which is going to be Laurent, who has taken quite a bit of damage. I think it's one. I'm going to double check. It might be more. I can't remember the actions. are not memorized yet on the ship, but I'm pretty sure it's one. Uh, I'm going to look right now. We'll see. Uh, the sick bay. Yeah, restore one health to any crew member. Okay. So Laurent visited the sick bay and got better. That was our ship action. Now we're going to go to our next um, action for our, our um, I'm sorry, our next event card, which is going to be interesting. Carpenters, an Iron Lucran ship with a crew appro approaches. So that's the ship right there coming up to us. And it says, pay for repairs, pay one materials, repair one, or sell materials, pay one material, gain one coin, or decline their services. I don't have any materials, actually. I have none. So we're just going to decline and say, thank you very much. We're going on our way. So the ship came by, we talked to them, and it went on our way. Okay, next up we're going to take our actions. I think before we do that, though, we are going to um, do, do uh, this at the very least. We're going to spend one command token to give this skill it to the captain, who has now two savvy and the ability to uh, lower morale on people, which is good. And she already has that ability, so now she can do it twice. So Captain Sophia now has this ability. We'll move things around just a little bit. The Inspire ability. And that is good. And now I could pay three to give this one, this, this sharp eye to somebody who's a good fighter. You know who really good fighter is Rafael Baguera. He doesn't do as much damage. So, like, I could give this to Kasumi, who does a lot of damage and can get extra bonuses to that. Uh, or, let me see this accuracy, by the way. Or I could give it to... Um, Someone who does a lot of damage but doesn't hit as well, like Cannon. However, uh, it's going to give him one of these symbols. He does not have one, so I'll just give him one. Probably rather give this to one that does have a, a perception symbol already to, to beef that person up. That would be Laurent or uh, Audrey, who already has a skill. But this is going to cost three of our tokens. So maybe we don't do that yet. Let's go look at the shipwreck first, and then we'll do that. For our first action of the turn... Uh, now that we moved up there, we're going to start with an explore action. We're going to look at the shipwreck, which is number seven on our map. Okay, if keyword freighter turned to 7.1, well, we do in fact have keyword freighter. So that's part of our, our quest to investigate the crash freighter. So we're going to move this now to 7.1, which is right below it. I'll just uh, tuck this in right here. It looks like it's rather long. There's, I'll block it out for you so you can see which one we're looking at. Okay, 7.1. In the rocks ahead lies the wreckage of a ship, eerily like the Manticore. That's downright chilling, says Audrey. You find a crashed ship that looks like the Manticore. Board the ship and search inside. Perception 6. Ooh, that makes me want to apply that perception ability. If we fail, we, get, we have minus 4 health. Some of the crew fall when a piece of rotten deck collapses. Now remember, the person that does the test has to take a portion of that damage, but doesn't have to take all of it. Um, so let's start there. We're definitely going to do that, right? So I think that what we're going to do is, it looks like I do want to apply that skill. It's going to take three of our command tokens. That'll leave us with three this round. So we're going to do that. We're going to take three before we take this test. It says you can do this at any time during your turn. So 
we're going to apply this skill to Kasumi. Now she has a, she does pretty good damage, so we're going to apply this to her right here, and then she's going to do the challenge. So that means she has two perception already, uh, and that means when we do the test, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to grab the deck. Let's see what we get here. Oh, another one of our sixes. We did not need to do that. Oh, this is really powerful too. We've nah, oh well, we don't have that many sixes in there, but that means we passed. So not only did she pass, but she got an eight. So she passed by quite a bit. All right, we don't have to read the fail effects. The only remaining crew members are the decaying corpse in the storage locker and a hefty brown dog who sits ha happily with... Sorry, I'm going to start that over again. <laughs> the only remaining crew members are the decaying corpse in the storage locker and a hefty brown dog who sits happily while Raphael rubs its filthy ears. Gregory emerges from the captain's cabin with a blurry photograph of Raphael, Audrey, Kasumi, and himself. On the back is a set of coordinates. You find a dog and a strange picture of your own crew members with the coordinates on the back. So we have a couple choices to make now. Take the dog and the picture back to the manticore. I think we're going to do that. Uh, search for more clues. Hmm. So we can gain two coins and draw an adventure card. We can search for more. We can continue to search, or we, we take what we have right now. <sighs> and return to the ship. So uh, that's not bad. Or we can continue to search, go to 136. Uh, so we're still going to gain Two coins and Adventure Card 9, Bigfoot the Dog. We just wouldn't complete Quest 5 yet. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to continue to search. So why not? I mean, we're, we're still early on in our adventure. We need as much stuff as we can. So we're going to get two coins, and we're going to get um, Adventure Card 9. Adventure Card 9 is going to be Bigfoot the Dog. I think this is the first, yeah, this is going to be the first Adventure Card we've drawn. So we'll show you what that looks like. So the Adventure Cards have this back on them. And that's what this is going to be. Bigfoot the dog. He's now part of our crew. Nice. He's an animal. He has some. We can uh, put a command token on him to get him to do some things for us. So he's going to go up with our stash of stuff on the ship. Okay. But now we're going to go to 136 and see what happens. This could be bad. I don't know. We'll see. And I did put a fatigue token on Kasumi. I just didn't want to break the story part of it up. All right. So 136. Though the ship has been thoroughly looted and its hull destroyed, it's unmistakable. This is the Manticore, or some version of it. And who is the corpse in the storage locker? The whole crew leaves with a sick feeling that overwhelms any curiosity about this ship, its missing sailors, and the ghostly photograph you found. The clues are undeniable. The ship full of corpses is somehow the Manticore. So we're going to gain a materials. Um, so we're going to gain some more stuff here, but we're going to also take some, some bad stuff as well. Okay, here's what happens before we return to the ship. We gain some materials. That's this piece right here. We also gain another coin, and we gain two low morale. So I think we'll put the first of the low morale. Who would really be bothered by this? Well, um, we know who was in the photograph, right? So it would probably be one of them. So I think we're going to put one on Kasumi, since she was in the photograph. And I can't remember who else was in the photograph. Uh, let's see, who was it? Duh, 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 duh. Oh, we, we way past that. So then I'll say the other one who is really affected by this because it's too weird would be the, the priest. He doesn't like this. It's very He's superstitious already. It's religious. He didn't like it all. So he's going to gain morale as well. So Marco, Marco and Kasumi gain some morale. Then we also complete this quest. So that is going back into the box. And we have a new quest, Strange Photograph. We found a crash ship. Crashed a ship. My English, I don't have a hard time talking right now. Uh, that resembles the Manticore and a picture of some of our crew. On the way back were coordinates leading to the base of a volcano near Lucra City. Well, I don't even know where Lucra City is, so we're just going to put this in our stack of uh, growing stack of quests, and that, and then we're going to return to the ship. Okay. Well, there is another location to explore. There, I could do another ex exploration action and explore those rocks. Or we could start to head off the map and look for Jin. I think uh, our priority will be looking for Jin. We don't have to explore everything, so we're going to move. I'm not going to use any of the crew to move. I don't want to get any more fatigue, by the way. Uh, yeah, none at all. Let's draw another card and see how far we move. Well, we're going to move one. So 
We're going to move to 13, map book 13, and uh, uh, we'll uh, flip that over and get it going for us. Well, heck, I think <laughs> we found our way into some craziness right here, right? Because there's that volcano we heard about with the strange photograph and the coordinates. That's probably this right here. Um, there's also some rough waters. There's, there's uh, looks like reefs here and uh, fog or something up here to get by. Uh, there's, there's a place called the City of Ash here. We do have some money. We might stop there and do a market action perhaps and then visit the port. That might be a good thing to do. Uh, there's this island here that looks pretty nice we could explore. So we got some things to do, but that actually ends our turn. Um, yeah, because we did our two actions. We explored the shipwreck and then we moved. And I think that's a good place to stop for this episode. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. It looks like we've uncovered quite a bit. There's the is, there's Lucra City there. It looks massive. Uh, two actual different locations, a port and a shop there, plus some things to explore. I think um, we can also explore the, the ocean right here. You know, we are looking for Jin. Let's look at this. Where did she say she was going? Let's see if this gives us any clues. Jin fell overboard during the storm that brought us here. We heard a rumor in Zakura that she's alive and looking for us. She boarded a ship heading west. So she could literally be anywhere. Um, she could have gone to the City of Ashes. That would be the closest location. Or maybe Lucra City, way over here. I don't know, but we'll find her. We're going to find her. We're going to uncover what's happening with the strange photograph. God, this is so thematic and full of story. I love it. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it too. So anyway, guys, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode of Sleeping Gods.